it's Shortland Street. Okay, okay, the aircon's been out for a couple of days. When's it gonna be fixed? Sophie, can I see you outside, please? You're accusing me of stressing Dad out after what you did to him. I know things are difficult for you, and I have been trying to make allowances. After what you did to my father, I could never respect you. And you know what? I can't even stand working for you anymore. So you can take your job and shove it. Hey. I need next week's theatre roster. Sure. It's in here somewhere. Always the last place you look. <laughs> Was there something else you needed? Yeah. You can tell me how I'm supposed to sleep at night. I can't stop thinking about you. Don't say that. Why not? It's true. I've tried avoiding you at work, at the IV. Things help and I just want it. Someone save me from grumpy old men. Mr. Peters just bit my head off because it's too hot in his room, as if I can do anything about it. Mm. Oh, baby. <laughs> Lunch today at home, and we can strip off. I'll make you forget all about work. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peters. If we like back, it's her fault. <sighs> Mr. Peters again. Ah. Roll on 12 o'clock. Can't wait. Me <laughs> too. You won't be on your own today. I'll be there. So will the youth aid rep and your dad. The best thing you can do is tell the truth. It's the only way when you're dealing with the cops or you just make matters worse. I am telling the truth. The fire was an accident. You left a trail of white spirits across the floor. You know how quick that stuff catches. I warned you often enough. The fuel container was leaking. It's not my fault. And you didn't notice the smell before you dropped a lit cigarette? Well, we've been through this a hundred times already. And the cops are going to go through it again. That's what a police investigator does. And any holes in your story, he'll be right onto them. But there are no holes. But why would you believe me? You never do. Where do you think you're going? Anywhere but here. Just nip across to the cave, all right? Order yourself a drink and I'll pay when I get there. Is there any point you even coming this afternoon? There's nothing to investigate as far as you're concerned. I want to believe in wins, I really do. Why would he start that fire deliberately? The same reason he put a hose in that woman's window. The same reason he stole vodka and got smashed out of his brain. This is different. This is a... Out of control? Look, what if he is? What if this is the turning point? Make or break? If he doesn't own up to what he's done and take his punishment, there's no telling what he'll do next. You make him sound like a psycho, and he's not. He is our son. Our 15-year-old son. And I want him straightened out. And that's not going to happen if you keep making excuses for him. I believe him. I believe that fire was an accident. Which is why I need to be at that meeting. To show the cops at least one of us is in a soft touch. Guess what? I just quit my job. I told Rachel to stuff it. What? <sighs> Because I'm sick of her going on at me and blaming me for everything. I and mean, she pretty much told me that I'm the one stressing Dad out, stopping him from getting better. Seriously, she said that? I was taking a break and I went to visit him and he asked me how work was going, so I told him about all the aircon stuff. Then Rachel comes in, drags me out to the corridor and starts tearing strips off. I hate her, babe. I really hate her. You're not the only one. <laughs> but are you sure quitting your job's what you really want? She hasn't needled you into it? Probably, but I don't care. Are you, like, walking out now? No, I'll work my two weeks' notice. I mean, she can't say I let anyone down. <laughs> Won't be a rough two weeks. I know. But, but your timing's not bad. You could go straight from here to uni. You know, a late enrolment application, and you go into your journal course. Maybe, if they'll take me. Well, I'll dig out some info, eh? And see what you have to do. Thanks. You know, I thought you were going to try and talk me out of it, and I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> oh, whatever you need, babe, I'm here. And there she was, pouring out all the hospital's problems onto Callum, and I could see he was getting stressed, and she just carried on. I had to step in. Why were you there in Callum's ward? He had surgery yesterday. I was checking on him, and I'm glad I did, because Hunter was doing nothing to shut Sophie up. 
Hunter was there, too. It was a, a family visit. I wasn't interfering. <laughs> You'd have to forgive Hunter and Sophie for disagreeing. You've broken up with their father. Don't start on this again. He probably saved my life. And mine, too. I know that. Everyone knows that. But Callum is out of danger. He's making good progress. You must realize that it's time for you to back off. Let him and his family be. If you'd done it before this, you'd still have Sophie as your PA. People aren't going to like it that she's resigned. They'll blame you. And how's Callum going to feel if I suddenly stop visiting? I've been there every day. What good has it done? He knows I still care about him. And that is something. <sighs> Just do what you think is right. I have to focus on Luke now. I've had to stand him down and report him to the College of Anesthetists. Oh, of course you have. I'm so sorry. I've been so wound up with Callum and Sophie, I didn't even think to ask. Well, there you have our problem, in a nutshell. She can't quit. Uh, Rachel has cost his family enough without Sophie losing her job as well. Oh, well, she tried to tough it out, but she couldn't. Not after what Rachel said to her this morning. And what was she even doing in your father's ward? Well, now that she's dumped him, she can't keep away. <laughs> It'd be funny if it wasn't so tragic. <laughs> so where's Sophie now? At her desk. She gave her two weeks' notice. Yeah. And then what? Oh, then she'll try and get back onto her journal course. Again? Well, she has to do something. She was happy where she is. She wasn't even thinking about study. She can't use it as a fallback position. It'll never work. Well, if it doesn't, she can try and find another job. Not like this. She had a lucky break getting into admin, OK? She needs to build on that, get some experience and a damn good reference. She can't let Rachel push her out. Well, it's too late. It's done. Well, she can change <laughs> her mind and withdraw her resignation. Sure she can. Good luck trying to talk her into it. Do you think I should give in? Say I did it. I think you should tell the truth. What's the point? Dad will never believe me. At least if I lie, he'll get off my back. He might even be proud of me. No one will be proud of you for lying. If the fire was accidental, then I heard people's voices. Look, I knew there were people in the building. I would never deliberately hurt anyone. You know I wouldn't. I know. It was an accident. But I was wrong to break into the building. If I hadn't, there wouldn't have been any fire, and Dr. Mackay wouldn't be in the hospital. I don't know what to do. Hey, mate. You OK? Why are you sitting here? I've been suspended. I tested positive for opiates. Oh, Luke, I'm sorry. But you must have known on some level that you couldn't just take drugs like that and get away with it. Not in your job. I didn't knowingly take anything. There was morphine in my nasal spray. I didn't put it there. No? Absolutely not. So where do you keep your nasal spray? In my bag or in my pocket? Within reach at all times? Yes. Yet you're saying that someone tampered with it without your knowledge. I know it sounds far-fetched, but so does being abducted in broad daylight. Having a bag being pulled over your head, being kept in isolation for days on end. You're not denying that happened, are you? No, it must have been terrifying. It was. Enough to send any normal person to drink or drugs. I'm not taking drugs. Whoever got to my... Nasal spray that wouldn't have had long. I must have been prepared. It had to have happened at the hospital. No, you would have noticed a stranger getting that close. I'm not suggesting a stranger. A colleague? You're not serious. Everything that's happened to me has happened since I've started asking questions about that foreign patient. Mr Tintor, who called himself Wilson? He was Isaac's patient. You're accusing Isaac? That's where my mind keeps going. No, I'm sorry, but even if I buy that there's someone messing with you, I can't let you point the finger at him. He might be a bit wild at times, but I know him. He's a good guy. He's my friend. Okay, sure. I, sh I shouldn't have suggested it. Now, you must be on your way somewhere. Hmm? You were heading for your car. Oh, yeah, my, um, my cell phone's in there. I'm lost without it. And I should get going home. Really? 
Not Isaac. You're so wrong on that one. Thing. It's making you run crazy. They can't keep their hands off their core valves. And then I discovered that I'd left my phone in the car, so I had to dart out on my brake. Whoa, slow down. What you need is a massage. Oh, which is why I thought we could have a picnic in bed. Oh, what a gorgeous thought. You carry the tray up, I'll get the chicken salads, and then we've got strawberries for after. Babe, seriously, any other day I would be straight up those stairs, but honestly, my head is all over the place. I found Luke sitting in his car before, staring into space. He's been suspended. Yeah, he was caught working with drugs in his system. Of course, he's been suspended. But he says he was set up. Someone put morphine in his nasal spray. Why would they do that? I don't know. But when you think how he was abducted, it's not beyond reason someone's out to get him. Or maybe the abduction was a case of mistaken identity. And Luke's traumatised, he's paranoid, it all leads to drug use. Either way, it's got nothing to do with us. Except he mentioned someone, a patient, a foreigner. What are you doing now? Calling Luke. I shut him down before and I really shouldn't have. He needs someone to talk to. He's probably at home. Hi. Is it all right if we come in or is this a bad time? We? Who's with you? It's Evan. He's asked if he can say something to you. All right. Ev? I'm sorry about the fire, Dr Mackay, and for what happened to you. It was an accident, but it was my fault. I should never have been in the building, and I shouldn't have been smoking. It was stupid and thoughtless, and I swear I'll never do anything like it ever again. I'm sorry. I accept your apology, Evan. Seriously? Thank you for coming to speak to me. No, thank you. I hope you get better real soon. Good luck to you, mate. Cheers. <coughs> See you, Dr Mackay. Wendy, I bet you had to twist his arm to get him to come and say that. No, I didn't. I suggested he might like to write something down, but he wanted to see you face to face. He said he had to. Brave boy. There might be hope for him yet. So, how was lunch? To take Nicole's mind off her woes. Hang up. Sidetrack talking. She's always tonight. <laughs> Did my name come up in your talk? No. It's not going to. What happened with us was nothing. It was to me. This might sound crazy, but <sighs> I think I'm falling in love with you. Crazy is right. We're not schoolgirls. It was a couple of silly kisses. Yeah, maybe so, but I can't help the way I feel, and I know you feel it too. That's why you can't stay in the same room as me. I feel guilty because I messed around when I'm in a committed relationship. I'm with Nicole. I plan to stay with her. What about me? You are making my mistake worse than it needs to be, so please just let it go and leave me alone. Sixty bucks plus penalties if I don't pay up. Why can't you just use a parking building like regular people? Well, you told me to be quick. Yeah, but that doesn't mean illegal. Sorry, okay? I'll pay the stupid fine myself. Even though they were your decorations, I was just trying to help. Look, if you're saying you want me to pay it, I'll pay it. But... All right, forget it. I'm here. For the eliminator, we want you to go short because of me. I'll see you later, okay? Hey, Bills. Hi. It's time, is it? Evan's waiting in the car. Did he say anything? Well, he hasn't confessed, if that's what you mean, but he has apologised to Callum Mackay for causing the accident. 
Did he now? Face to face. It wasn't an easy thing. I was proud of him. I'm taking responsibility, you see? That's what I'm talking about. Good on him. I'll finish up here. We'll be on our way. It's no problem, Shelley. I just thought I'd offer. OK, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, is it cooler in here? Yes, I think it is. The aircon must be back on. Excellent timing, just as I'm going home. Mm. Hopefully it's chill DD. I'm sure that's why no one snapped up the spare shift. They've heard what a furnace it is down there. What spare shift? Tonight. I wanted to give it to one of ours, but I'm just going to have to call the Bureau. Well, no, don't. I'll take it. You can't. We've got plans tonight. Takeaways and a DVD. We can do that any night. We don't have the place to ourselves any night. Mum's taking JJ for a sleepover. I've planned it specially. Don't make me feel bad, please. I really need the money. Well, then you need me. OK. Just make sure you get some sleep first. I'll dream of you, I promise. Thank you again so much. <laughs> what are you looking so pleased about? The aircon is fixed. Rachel is finally off my back. <laughs> I heard you had a hissy fit and resigned. It wasn't a hissy fit. You didn't hear what she said to me, and you haven't seen the way she's been treating me while she's been fawning over Dad before she goes off to be with Chris Warner. She's disgusting. Yeah, but why let her cost you your job? I can't work for someone that I don't respect. If anyone should understand that, it's you. Because? Because it's the same reason why you quit the IV. You didn't respect Karen. Karen was a criminal. And Rachel is a cheating, lying, self-serving cow. There's no difference. Yes, there is. You like this job. It's important to you. The Ivy job meant nothing to me. Kieran didn't cost me a thing. Yeah, well, he cost me a lot, including my self-esteem, and I don't want Rachel to do the same. So I've resigned, and I'm going. Arson is a serious offence, Evan, and for that reason, a full investigation has to be carried out. Are you clear about that? But I didn't do it. It was an accident. That's what you said when you first questioned. Must have been a very scary time for you. It was. Now that things have settled down and you've had a chance to think, if you'd like to change or add anything? No, nothing. Just to be clear, you won't be penalised if you change your story now. Not at all. But it's not a story. I've told you what happened. All of it. I don't know what else you want me to say. Just the truth, Eve, like we talked about. I never meant to start the fire. The fuel was leaking out of the bottle and I was smoking. It was stupid, but it was an accident. End of. Right then, Evan. Here's what's going to happen. We have enough evidence now to charge you with arson. After that, you'll be sent home. But you'll have to appear in court in two weeks' time to answer the charges. Meaning to plead guilty or not guilty. Do you understand? What's the boy doing? How do you think? He's just been charged with arson. He's scared stiff. It'll only get worse if he pleads not guilty. It'll be a court case. Drag on for months. We could have sorted this out today. He didn't do it, Murray. If it takes a court case to prove that, then we should be standing by him, both of us. You are so determined to believe he's lying. Why? What is wrong with you? What's wrong with you that you can't see what he's like? If you'd taken a stronger hand with him sooner, then maybe... You're blaming me? Now it's my fault? No, it's my fault. I should have been home more than I was. Because I'm such a terrible mother. Well, don't worry, you won't need to listen to another stupid word I say this evening because you will need to find somewhere else to sleep tonight. I'm heading off. Shall I expect you for dinner? Yes, please. But I might be a little while. I need to collect some stuff from the hotel. So you're staying with me tonight? Yeah, I thought I might. I also thought I might like to move in with you. If you still want me, if it's OK with the boys. Rachel, you have just made me the happiest man. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. No, you're fine. You can be the first to know we're moving in together. Really? You don't mind if I tell people, do you? No, tell the world. Let the tongues wag. I don't care. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> well, congratulations or something. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. Bye. Nice. I'm not changing my mind. I've already told Hunter and Daniel. 
Look, I know why you're doing this. I'm doing what I think is right. To get even with Rachel for the way she treated me. And the way she treated me? She hasn't considered my feelings at all since you've been in here. She's just pushed me aside. And why is that, do you think? Because she's completely self-centered, obviously. She's always been. Maybe she sees me in you. Or maybe you make her feel guilty. I bet I do. <laughs> so why quit? Why let her off the hook so easily? Do you think I'm going to? When I'm back on my feet, Sophie, I'll be back upstairs running this place. If you really want to support me, you will be there too. Hmm. Whatever. Have you ruined her song tonight? No, uh, it's just been covered in-house. Nicole's here. OK. Hoping to see the lovely Roy Motor, will you? <laughs> I'm curious about her, that's all I'm sure I know from somewhere. Yes, I'm sure you wish you did. Yeah, you, time for your dinner break. I'll take <laughs> over here. Who's Roy Mutter? Never you mind. Oh, come on. If there's gossip, I want to hear it first. It's no gossip. She's just a bureau nurse. Who TK's got the hots for. Did he ask her out? How are things with Maya? Don't change the subject. Well, if you're not doing anything, file these for me, will you? Since you ask, Maya and I are great. She's been so lovely since I got back that I'm trying to think of sexy ways to say thank you. Any ideas? Oh, no, I'm asking the wrong person for a second there. I mistook you for someone who had a love life. Sorry. Cheeky. <laughs> Hi, again. Thought you'd gone home. I've been sitting in my car waiting for you. What for? Because you're right. There is something going on with us, and I think we need to talk about it. Do you want to hop in? Sure. Those things that I said about not feeling anything for you, they were lies. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about you. I have tried, but... I can't stop thinking about you either. Don't miss the feature-length season finale of The Fall. See it first Wednesday at 9.35 here on RTE1. Up next, Doctors.